In this video, we're going to look at how to add fractions that have different denominators. So we have two fractions here, 3 eighths and 5 twelfths, and they have different denominators. The first one has a denominator of 8, and the second one has a denominator of 12. Uh, before we talk about how to add these together, sometimes it helps to look at a picture of the fraction. The fraction 3 eighths means that the whole has been split into 8 equal parts, and we have 3 out of those 8 parts. Here's a picture of the fraction 3 eighths. This whole outside rectangle has been split into 8 equal pieces, and we have 3 out of the 8 pieces. For the second fraction, 5 twelfths, that means that the whole has been split into 12 equal pieces. You can see that these pieces are smaller than the eighths, and we have 5 out of the 12 pieces. When fractions have different denominators, that means the size of each part is different. So the eighth pieces are larger than the twelfth pieces, so we can't just count them up as they are because they are not the same size. So when you have fractions that have different denominators, what you need to do first is find a common denominator. There's a couple different ways to do that. Some people will tell you to just multiply the two denominators together to get a common denominator. And you can do that, that's fine, you'll get the same answer. Um, but a lot of times when you do it that way, you get a really large number on the bottom. Um, if you multiply 8 by 12, um, you get 96. And you can use 96 as a denominator, but you'll have to do some simplifying at the end. So if you find what's called the least common denominator, the smallest number possible for the denominator, you end up saving yourself some time at the end. So a different way to find a common denominator is to list the multiples of each bottom number and see what is the smallest number they have in common as a multiple. So let's start by listing out some multiples of the first denominator, the 8. 8 times 1 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 5 is 40. Um, and we can go back and list more if we need to, but that's probably good for now. And then next we need to look at multiples of 12. 12 times 1 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. And we can stop there because I can see that 24 is also a multiple of 8. So 24 is a multiple of 8 and it's a multiple of 12. It's the smallest multiple they have in common. Um, this is called the least common multiple, and it's also called the least common denominator. That means it's the smallest number possible that we can use as a common denominator. So if we use 24, instead of multiplying these together and get 96, um, we're going to end up with smaller numbers. Um, and I find that students usually do better when they're dealing with smaller numbers. And it'll save you a step at the end because we won't have to simplify. So our goal is to rewrite the two fractions so that they have a 24 as the denominator. So what you want to do is go back to the original problems and say, what do I have to do to fix this so that it has a 24 on the bottom? And what you do is you multiply by what I call a fancy form of 1. When you multiply a number by 1, nothing happens to it. So as long as you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, you're really just multiplying by 1. So what you do is look at the bottom number and say, what do I need to multiply the 8 by to turn it into a 24? Well, 8 times 3 is 24, so I need to multiply the bottom number by 3. And if I multiply the bottom by 3, I also have to multiply the top of the fraction, the numerator, by 3 because I'm really, I'm multiplying by 3 over 3, which is just 1. So this isn't changing the size of this fraction. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 8 is 24. So 3 eighths is the same thing as 9 24 For the next one, I have to look at the 12. What do I need to multiply the 12 by to get 24? I need to multiply it by 2. And if I multiply the bottom by 2, I also multiply the top by 2. 5 times 2 is 10, and 12 times 2 is 24. So the fraction 5 twelfths is the same thing as the fraction 10 over 24. Once you have a common denominator, that means that you've changed the fractions so that they're all the same size. So you have all these little 24th pieces. So if you picture a rectangle that's 
been cut into 24 pieces. You have all these tiny little 24th pieces. You have 9 of them plus 10 more. That's a total of 19 of them. So you have 19 24ths. And let's look at a picture of that to help you visualize it a little bit better. Here's a better picture of this. Here's the hole and it's been split into 24 equal pieces. Our first fraction was the same thing as 9 over 24, so that means we had 9 of these little 24th pieces. And then our second fraction was the same as 10 24 so we had 10 more of those little pieces. So if we count up the 24th pieces, we had 9 plus 10 more of them, that gives us a total of 19 of them. So we have 19 24 here are just the general steps for adding fractions with different denominators. The first thing you want to do is find a common denominator. Figure out a number that you can use for the bottom that's a multiple of both of the denominators. You can multiply them together and use that number, or you can find the least common denominator by listing the multiples and see which one is the smallest multiple they have in common. Once you've found a common denominator, you're going to rewrite the fractions using that new denominator. And to do that, you're going to multiply the fractions by fancy forms of 1. Make sure when you multiply your fractions to change them that you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. Once you have common denominators, you're adding the fractions together. Your bottom numbers are the same, so all the pieces are the same size, and you're just counting them up. When you do that, you're counting up the numerators and the denominator doesn't change. That's because the fraction pieces are all the same size. You're not changing the size of the fraction at that point. The last step is to look at your fraction and make sure it's simplified. If your numerator and denominator have any factors in common, you'll need to divide those out to make sure your answer is a simplified fraction.